Latina, cisgender, pansexual, democratic, socialist, hopeless romantic, feminist, agnostic, recovering alcoholic, meat eater, animal lover, um, <laughs> participatory documentarian. So needless to say, I'm always confused. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm never confused about being confused. I hope that made sense. You may be wondering it is why you're seeing me. I was born and raised in New York City. I'm the only child of a mother who's a doctor, and my father works at the UN in capacities I'm still trying to understand. Because of them, I've always been fascinated with people's obsession with love. I think it stems from the reality of knowing that we're actually really truly alone. I wanted to explore further on what relationships mean and how they, for a lack of a better word, change us. I met Juan last year when I began grad school. He was sitting in the park, as I was walking over to shoot some B-roll, and he kept looking into the camera. I walked over, explained the situation, and he said, I'm looking at you. I didn't buy into it, but I agreed to a date with him because I needed him to stay in the shot. I needed the consistency. Uh, in the background, I mean. <laughs> Our first date was in this construction site where we took this hoist to the top floor. He had blankets, a heater, and Chinese takeout. We've been together ever since. He's lived quite an interesting life. The more of his friends I meet, the more stories I hear. So I decided to do my mini doc directing exercise on him and interview him about his love life. I mean, his life, his life, right? <laughs> anyway, I know you believe my film will be done with much bias, but you're wrong. Side note, I know this doesn't pass the Bechdel test, but you can't be surprised when this play itself was written by a man. <laughs> <laughs> so consider yourself warned. Where's your tie? Oh, I'd rather not. You didn't like the color? I prefer my neck to be free. 
Gotcha. Remind me again why I agreed to this. Love. You mean I didn't bargain for anything? <laughs> Not this time, which I was surprised by. Well, then I demand renegotiation. I can't think of anything you don't already have. Well, I can think of one thing. I've given you everything else. I want you to marry me. Talked about this. And I've answered all your questions. I've given you everything. I know. I want this. Hold on. You're at a point where it makes sense. I'm still in school. It's the age thing. No, I didn't say that. So what did you say? I'm saying that I'm in love with you. With you and no one's made me want to be such a loving person. But? But you've been with many women. Oh, and that bothers you. Don't assume. Okay, I, I apologize. I don't know how committed you would be. You're serious. I've never felt this way about anyone. Blah, blah, blah. I'm sure you said that to all the women. I never proposed to any of the others. Not even close. Not even close. Not to any of the... Ten? <laughs> no. <laughs> right. I'll give you an answer after the shoot. No. Have a seat. Kept it warm for you. It was like the hot seat. <laughs> Have you committed any heinous crimes? Depends on whom you ask. <laughs> I look terrible in this shirt. You know, you're actually kind of sexy. No. <laughs> <laughs> Men are so easy. Ouch. <laughs> There you go, capturing my soul. I had no idea you were so superstitious. <laughs> definitely, <laughs> definitely editing that out. Oh. Okay. Feel free to talk and use more words as you normally would. Try to keep your responses to the point and not brief, but to the point, okay? Yes. Also for the sake of consistency, Incorporate the question with the answer. What's your name? Juan Nerizari. My name is? Oh, my name is Juan Nerizari. How old are you? I am 40 years young. OK, tell me more. Like? Where were you born? If you know where I was born. They don't. <laughs> I was born in San Juan, Puerto Rico. I moved to New York City when I was 14. How was your childhood like? Uh, it was, I uh, don't remember such things. Recall your mother. She was a woman of virtue. Mm -hmm. She held it in two places, in her heart and her belt. Mm -hmm. And your father? He stood by himself on many matters. We were all by his deathbed, but still he died alone. You had a little sister? I don't want to talk about that. But you told me before. I, well, yes, but now I'm telling them. Do you believe in magic? Those mm, no. miracles? No. Do you believe in God? No. Do you believe in love at first sight? No. Do you believe in love? Indubitably. <laughs> Are you in love now, Juan? Yes. Does she treat you well? She does. Have you ever felt out of love with her? Once. When? When she made me make a film. <laughs> You're such a clown. Aren't you going to ask what I do for a living? Don't rush me. What do you do for a living? I am the owner of Pancho Villa. It is a play with words. It is a building down on Grand Street where each floor is a villa. You going? Okay. On the first floor is the Pancho Villa lobby. 
This is where guests can enjoy the restaurant or the lounge. On the second floor is the first villa named Don Quixote. It is a Mexican theme with murals and hidden, uh, and windmills. The third is called Zorro. Uh, there are hidden treasures for guests to find. On the fourth floor is my favorite. The Don Juan Villa. The rooms are covered in flower arrangements, fresh fruit, silk sheets, and love letters. Ding dong. Oh, I'll get that. Stay put. I don't want to ruin the shot. Do you trust me? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Any reason I should be ringing the doorbell before I enter an open door? Yes. Well, what? Uh, what? It's been so long. It certainly has. Well, what are you doing here? I was invited by Francisca. You mean Francesca? She invited you? Yeah, for the opening of your new hotel. Oh. Yeah, uh, this part of the documentary will explore Mr. Izarari's past and how he got to where he is today. Right. Right. Place. Oh, I love to show it to you. So, uh, for the first portion, I want to ask Isla a few questions, and you can't interrupt or say any jokes, okay? The first few are general questions about you, and then I'll get to dig a little deeper. With a spoon. With a shovel. Mm -hmm. <laughs> More um, like, you know, things. But let's start with, what's your name? Uh, my name is Isla Rocio Blanc, sorry. Perfect. Mind if I ask your age? I'm 35. And where were you born? I was born in Barcelona, and I lived there for 16 years until I moved to America with my older sister. First, the Bronx, then Queens, then Tribeca. You really live in Tribeca? The Freedom Tower is right outside my window. Well, it must be some apartments. I, it's a law. Well, the people traffic must suck. I have a Benz. Uh, still, though, the car traffic? My chauffeur drives. Mm -hmm. The parking? Perfect garage. Gas is expensive? What? <laughs> what do you do for a living, Isla? <laughs> I'm an architect and co-owner of a construction company that builds skyscrapers. You? I'm a... Uh... I'm a normal person. <laughs> uh, do you remember when you and Juan first met? Mm, I don't remember the exact moment, do you? Mm, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> we had seen each other in passing a few times, and I think we began talking because of the volunteer work we did in Ecuador. They needed instructors that spoke foreign, instructors that spoke foreign language. He spoke Spanish and I spoke French. What do you remember about him? I could tell he was going to be somebody. He had good ideas and faith in people that believed in his good ideas. How long were you two dated? What, a few months? Almost a year, I think. That long, no. I never take someone so much in my entire life. How <laughs> <laughs> oh, cute. Thank you. Cute is for young people. Every concierge from Columbus Circle to Battery, um, Battery Park knew our names. Do we only need us like that? <laughs> We'd make up reasons to see each other, and we stayed in each other's apartments for months at a time. Isn't that dating? It was never official. Sounds like you had everything but him. I never made it official. What did he do to you? <laughs> it wasn't him, it was me. I wasn't ready for him. Or she told me that she never had a boyfriend before. And then she said to me uh, that she was religious and her family would never approve. And 
Oh, the last one was she said she was promised to another man. <laughs> I sound so crazy. You were. <laughs> but finally happened to make it official. I got cancer. I was diagnosed with leukemia. I was told my, by my physician that it was grim. Then I realized that my dream of becoming a grad school student and an architect was never going to happen. So my perspective changed. How did that make you feel? I was devastated, of course. But she finally gave me a chance. It was bittersweet. I called her my little great friend. <laughs> Can I tell you something? What? I knew when you cried to sleep. I didn't mean for you to. He's know. an ugly crier. Ah, okay. okay, okay. <laughs> it actually made me feel better. How? Oh. It was like you were doing all the crying for me. I was glad to. When I went into remission, I told him to go start his business, and I went on to grad school. You broke up with him? Yes. Why? We didn't need each other anymore. That's not what you told me. <laughs> I said we were too alike. You no longer had a woman to hold you back from your business. And I no longer had a man to keep me from my ambitions. Pause. I don't like her. <laughs> Play. <laughs> what is it like seeing each other now? You want to go first? Ladies first. And the lady requests that you go. Mm -hmm. Ayla told me that some things in life don't always need answers. Are you married? You certainly haunted me about it. Mm, not yet. <laughs> I thought so. Oh, well, you did? Yeah. Are you married? God, no. <laughs> Why is that funny? <laughs> <laughs> if him and I are as alike as I think we are, just know we're tigers. Do you think he's incapable of loving? Is that what I said? <laughs> Anyone is capable of loving, but are they capable of staying in love? Are you, friend? I am. Have you ever been in love? I am. Has he changed you? Yes. Then you? or a pleaser. One is not like that. Would you give me a drink, please? <laughs> In a glass with ice and lemon with a straw? <laughs> I need a favor, Francisca. <laughs> Francesca. Mm -hmm. Of course. Could you feel me saying something to Juan? Sure. <clears throat> Juan. I asked Ryan to show you this in a few weeks. Don't take out any anger on her. The right wish. I'm going to Barcelona to spend my last days. My cancer returned. It was good to see you. Thank you, Fran, for allowing me that. Now, To return the favor, allow me to give you some advice about him. Why would I need that? He will only ever love himself. Where's Ayla? She left. After all that? Did you see her, the way she carried herself? She is a special woman. She's gonna die without any money, so are you. That's rude. <laughs> I have you! <laughs> you sure you don't rather be a tiger? Where you go, Francesca? Is that it? You're using this film project so you can ask me if I will commit to you? I asked you to marry me! She said you hounded her about it. Yeah, we only talked about it, I swear. You, huh? 
How did you find her? Well, and found this. I was looking for that. Did you read it? Every page. This is bright. I don't need to know the details about all your con conquests, but why did you write them down? I know you were young, but I never thought you would do these. Why did you write them down? At first, it was a thing to do. That so you showed your friends, I'm sure. I want to write a book. Specifically dealing with sex, nonetheless. This isn't erotica. <laughs> like you don't enjoy reading every chapter over and over again. Not all of these are positive experiences. <laughs> but it's definitely more than 10. I lost count at 50. <laughs> if I had told you I had been around the block a few times. <laughs> more like walked, ran, laid, drove, and stood around the block a few times. I was sowing my wild oats. Sowing, cropping, weathering, sprouting, cultivating. Oh, you want me to say I'm whore? <laughs> and a liar. I'm, I'm sorry, I didn't. I'm not an addict. And how would you explain it? I'm lucky. <laughs> so, how come I'm not in there? Please. Yeah, you know what I say? Say. Each entry represents a unique encounter with these women and with you. There's nothing I haven't already written. Mm. Oh. <laughs> You're an asshole. You asked me, and I wasn't going to lie. You don't get sympathy for telling the truth. I don't think less of you. You don't have to. Doing that all on my own. Even if we did something worth writing, there's, there's a reason I wouldn't have put it into my book yet. Yeah, this ought to be good. I wanted your entry to be our wedding. Oh, God. Uh, that is good. <laughs> I didn't tell you about the book because, to be honest, if we broke up, what would be the point? I would like to know if I'm going to be a chapter in some man's book. And in that case, I apologize. Weird. You have to know that. Ding dong. I'll get, I'll get it. it. I'll get it. Well, let me guess another one of my exes. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> are, you, are you serious, Francesca? What is it? Oh, she can be serious. <laughs> <laughs> Mary, you know Juan. Juan. You know Mary. <laughs> Mary. <laughs> Hi. Hello. <laughs> you can sit down. So, you two haven't seen each other in how long? 15 years. Okay. It's a long. In nine months. Okay. Eight days. Oh my god. <laughs> I'm going to ask it's 16 you. hours. <laughs> Do you have it by the second? No, that would be too much. <laughs> Mary, I'm going to ask you a few questions and please reply with the answer, with the question in your answer, okay? Understood. What is your name? My name is Mary. And your last name? I'd rather not. I have a warrant. <laughs> <laughs> How old are you? Oh, you never ask for that of a woman. I understand. Where were you born? Do you really need all this information? It would help to have some kind of a profile. 
I live in Queens. Okay, and what do you do for a living? I'm a concierge at the Sheraton. What was the first time you met Juan? <sighs> On a summer day at the hotel. He was staying there because um, he had a meeting with a shareholder who was also in the city for business. He was sitting in the lobby waiting to be called on. He looked nervous and anxious. And he was the most handsome man I've ever seen. I kept staring at him to get his attention. Um, but after a while, I had to stop because my eyes started to hurt. <laughs> so what did you do? I pretended to drop my pen on the floor, and then I bent over in front of him. Please. It doesn't work unless you have a big butt. <laughs> so what was the next move? Um, I was beginning to get hot, and um, then I used the vending machine to get me a Diet Coke, and would you believe I got two? Since he was also sweating, um, I walked over and offered him one. Do you remember that? Vaguely. <laughs> Um, I knew you weren't really into me. That's not true. I know I came off really aggressive. A little. Mm -hmm. It was only because I, I liked you so much. I know her. Mary, tell me about how you felt about Juan. Does she have to? Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> it was... Love at first sight. Um, I know he doesn't believe in that, but I do. You know, I think he was that close to falling in love with me. What do you think kept him from committing? I think it was because I asked too much of him. Can you be more specific? You know, simple things like wanting to Spend a lot of time together, constant texting, marriage with two kids within the next year, stuff like that. <laughs> wow. <sighs> the, day, um, the day I met all of his friends, um, I asked him to marry me. <laughs> that fast. <laughs> really? <laughs> but um, he said that we were going too fast. Um, remember that one? Remember um, how much that hurt? <laughs> okay, how about you tell me a little bit about your affection towards Juan? You mean my clinginess? Uh, sure, mm -hmm. we can use that word, your word. <laughs> Juan isn't your ordinary guy. He takes really good care of himself and actually bathes once a day. <laughs> he has, you know, fashion sense and sticks with decisions once it's been made. He, he's an amazing lover. <laughs> um, he's just so pleasant and voyeuristic and so, so, so... I get it. I get it. Yeah. Um, we once, um, we once banged each other's brains on the roof garden on top of the tent. <laughs> <laughs> so I read. We should move on. <laughs> are you, um, are you embarrassed? Oh, yes! <laughs> I have never seen him act like this. You would think this film was going to go his, go his wife or something. Mary. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> uh, he was dissatisfied with me. Well, except for the sex on the roof. Oh, you need to be excused. No, 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 no. <laughs> I heard that you um you had purchased that same exact property. Uh, you heard correct. <laughs> I never got an invite for the opening. Okay, we haven't spoken in years. I know. I had to find out through social media. <laughs> Where is this building? You mean our building? <laughs> yeah, sure. well, yeah, let's change the subject. <laughs> it's on Grand Street. I have a brochure. <laughs> How fucking lovely. <laughs> well, we were dating. <laughs> Mary and I, we, we, we walk all over the city and imagine different abandoned lots or, or empty buildings that could be my hotel. Yeah. That site happened to be a good price. I, I kept it on my radar ever since. It's like one big fucking memorial for you. No, the roof doesn't even look the same. 
There are a lot of tanning chairs. This is <laughs> this is really fucking nice. Hey, this was all your idea. I would like to say something. Any other memorials you kept? No. Uh, excuse right. me. Right. Because you kept them all in your book. I am not going to fight with you. Hello. There's no way anyone could know who they're really with. You know me. This isn't professional. Look, I just don't understand. I feel like you just don't know who anyone is. You know me. Pause. Am I losing control? <laughs> Hello? Someone tell me the truth. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Play. Are you still filming? Yes. I want this on film. Juan? I'm still in love with you. <laughs> what a shot. <laughs> That's flattering, but I, I'm with someone. Me. <laughs> yes, Francesca. You're with her? Yes, I am. Uh, but she's crazy. Uh, I'll show you crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Mary, I don't feel the same way. But you wanted me to come here. Well, that was Francesca's doing. I didn't even know you were going to be here. And Francesca is sorry. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> that's true? Yeah, I'm sorry. This was me. In all fairness, this wasn't meant to be a, a reunion. This was for the documentary. I don't know what to say. Well, surely you thought about me. What you had, you and I had together was special. <coughs> was special. <laughs> that time is gone. She looks like she could be your daughter. Oh. Oh, yeah. ah, ah, ah. Mary, go. That's fine. No skin off my nose. Um, I'm okay. I've, I have a boyfriend. <laughs> Two of them. Oh, I'm so jealous. <laughs> <laughs> you better be. Really, her. Hey, you shouldn't be talking. Like, I don't see around your finger. I, I, at least I had one. <gasps> oh, gotta be shitting me. That's oh. not true. <laughs> yes, it is. No. <laughs> then what do you call this? <sighs> That's fake. <laughs> the ring is, but our love isn't. <laughs> <laughs> this ring is something I won you at a carnival. We were joking around when we said we were married. Remember, Mary? <laughs> Jokes come from truth, Juan. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not doing this anymore. You have to leave. Is, is that what you want or what she wants? She doesn't control me. So you're saying? Yes. Ring, 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 ring. Oh. Um, hello. I'm not to call. I'm on working, babe. I'll, I'll see you tonight. <laughs> um, th wasn't this super great? Um, we should do this again. Um, I'll bring my old ball and chain, and you can bring um, that. <laughs> oh. oh, I'm not talking to anyone. I'm listening to you. <laughs> <laughs> you really know how to pick up. Oh, Francesca. You can bring this to just any old buddy. Francesca. <laughs> I don't care if he 
you slept with every woman in New York in every single building. You could have at least said something to me. Instead, I was ambushed with images of tanning chairs. Francesca! And... What? You've got some nerve to talk to me like that. Like I'm the bad guy. How could you invite my exes here? My life is in some film experiment. I'm not a subject or, or topic to be discussed. And maybe I, I lied about some things, but I had reasons. What's yours for this? I don't, I don't think you understand how hard it is for women to trust men these days. This is one big test. For us, and... Unbelievable. We've passed it so far. I'm going to the hotel. This woman gave you her all and you still weren't interested. We want whom we want. When I give you my all, what happens when you're not interested in me anymore? That could never happen. When I get old and wrinkly and forgetful and I talk on and on about how the industry of film is going to crap, are you still gonna listen? I promise. No one can do that. In that case, neither can you. Exactly. That's why I can't simply say yes with so little information. That's the risk. Maybe I don't know what questions to ask yet. This is childish. If you're having doubts, then they are of your own doing. And you can get through them alone. Ding dong. <laughs> and who is that? They're two o'clock. Who? Let's find out, shall we? No, you need to tell me who this is. No, I don't. If this is going to make you decide about us, then I'll go through with it. But at least tell me whom it is. You're afraid. I wasn't always a good man. Allow me um, emotional preparations. What do you mean you were always a good man? One time, I... If you describe a felony, it's over. I was drunk. So was this woman, and, and, and she came on to me. I, I didn't have the balls to say no. She didn't remember anything. And I felt disgusted ever since. Yeah, I read that in your book. Do you think less of me? Think you're a man? Anyway, she never replied back to me. So who is this? Her name is Ren. You two had a weekend in Long Island. It seems like it was a fling, but according to your book, she changed you for the better. Remember her? Ren isn't a... <laughs> Francesca. <laughs> That's me. <laughs> nice to put a name to the face. Likewise. So. <laughs> Take a seat. Hey. <laughs> I'm not happy to see you either. Pause. <laughs> Are you seeing this? <laughs> what do I do? I need suggestions. Uh, run. <laughs> Keep recording. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm in too deep. Yeah. Play. Uh, please don't look into the camera and put the question into the answer. Yes, I'm a mark. I work in marketing. I know what to do. <laughs> oh, great. What's your name? My name is Ren Harris. Um, I'm 33 years old. 
I'm a CMO of Global Paradise Company. I have one son whom I've adopted with my husband, Chris. Ooh. We're getting married in a week. Congratulations. Thank you. Um, if you recall, when was the first time you met Juan? It was through a mutual friend. I, I believe he was couch surfing. <laughs> At the time, we also had recently, he had recently gone through a really bad breakup. He told you this? He did. I forget the woman's name. It's okay, I'm sure it's not important to the story. Actually, it is. How? This woman was the love of his life, apparently. <laughs> she had basically <laughs> saw him for who he was and left him. Where did you two exactly meet? At a bar. He was with our mutual friend that we hung out for the entire week. Um, I had several spare, spare tickets to the show from work for a Jones Beach concert, and I forget who, um, and I invited him. What was your first impression of him? <sighs> He's painfully cute. <laughs> <laughs> and insufferably straight. Uh -huh. What did you do, right? <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't always against trying. Uh, we kept running into each other. And um, it was only a matter of time before I made my feelings known. You fell for him that fast. I did. And I thought I could change him. Continue. Well, he ruined me. <laughs> sure, it wasn't all bad. Listen. <laughs> I know you want me here to make him look good and for this film and, but. That's not why I came. I have a lot of things to, I need to get off my chest. Feel free. Juan is selfish, a user, and a manipulator. We spent two days in a hotel room together. He went on about his ex and how she had broken his heart. But he wasn't complaining like a normal person, no. <laughs> He did it with style. He begged for pity, and then he tells you how hope for love will give him life. He said he was sorry and embarrassed for crying and that he would make up for it. Allowing you to forgive him. I fell for it like an idiot. The biggest, oldest trick in the book, and I fell for it. Constructed reasons to stay with me. He made it all the way into my bed. The first night we were drunk, we woke up surrounded by takeout food and tourist pamphlets. <laughs> Having promised some healthy distractions, we found ourselves on the beach following a deer that came up to us. We got ourselves between two houses and we kissed. We lied to each other and we said we were getting feelings. At that hotel, we remained unclothed for the entire next he told me about his family, and I told him about mine. He told me how he felt alive again. What he never, what I never told him was that I did too. He took the fear out of love for me. We made plans to meet in the city. Sunday morning. I woke up. And I found my wallet empty. Oh. And the rental gone. Well, would you say that the events you shared with him were a result of his pain from the previous relationship? No shit. <laughs> <laughs> but you tell me. Does that justify? It's not for me to say. No one has the authority on love or etiquette of. Guess not. But actions speak louder than words. And to him, that was the only honest thing he has ever done. He's more complicated than that. Is he? Let me ask him. Is that true? <laughs> <laughs> well, let's not argue. Yeah. Are you incapable of morality? 
I'm not going to go do this with you. Yeah, the answer is no good. I felt really bad about what I did. You owe me a thousand dollars. I can write you a check if you like. I'm sure that would bounce too. I have to pick up Tinker out. Let's get back to why we're here. I don't care about your documentary. <laughs> You know what I don't get? <laughs> Why I keep asking myself over and over again, like a vinyl that skips in my head. Why did you run away? I don't know. Bullshit. I, it happened. Things don't happen, I, Juan. Did she call you back? No. Did I say something wrong? Never. Was it not what you expected? Yes, that's not it. Were you scared? Never was you. Were you ashamed? I'm not that kind of man. You know, I understand the curiosity, the need to explore and, and all that crap or the loneliness, but the sudden need to vanish from one's life without explanation is beyond my understanding of a human being. You didn't deserve that. You're fucking right I don't deserve that. <laughs> I opened my bed to you. I never lied while I was with oh, you. Like I care. I'm not holding on to that weekend like treasure. It's a weight on my back. I can never in my life have felt so worthless. I'm sorry. It's not a reason. But I am sorry. It won't do. Stop acting and tell him the truth. He deserves to know. You aren't good enough for me. I want my fucking money. <laughs> Did you get that on film? Now, before you go asking me a billion questions, let me sit down for a minute. You'll be fine. You'll be fine. Nothing can wipe that face off of you, right? I had just gotten out of a relationship that I don't care. affected me with. Really? I don't care. Francesca, it was a mistake. I could be one too. You're taking everything and comparing it to us. You're right. That doesn't make it any less factual. I can't answer all of these what-ifs. I saw a tortured man leave here with dignity. Something you took that he couldn't get back until today. You don't stay when the going gets tough. I have been with you through the difficulties of, of starting the hotel, spending time away, the, the pressures on me, the misunderstandings, uh, your addiction, this, your, your test. Have I passed so far? Barely. You still love me. I do. Do you want to marry me or not? Only say yes, if you're certain. I may never be. <sighs> then forever I'll wait. I can't let you do that. Why not? Sure you can. I'm patient, and you're stubborn. <laughs> you're impossible. And you're broken. Uh. <laughs> I can't believe I'm gonna say this. Marry me. No. Serious. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. Uh, well, what made you change your mind? Do it before it switches back. Okay, okay. <laughs> Oh, but I don't have the ring. 
You bought one? Of course. Uh, well, uh, where is it? At the hotel. No, 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 no. Who cares? Do it without it. This isn't romantic. <laughs> <laughs> Francesca. You. <laughs> for my entire life, I have been searching and searching. Yeah. You have a speech? Oh, yes, I have a speech. Of course I have a speech. Oh my gosh. Okay, <laughs> Francesca, for my entire life. You wrote it yourself? Yes! <laughs> what? When? Oh, I've had it for months now. Could I do this? Yes, yes, I'm sorry. Okay. Francesca, for my entire life, I've been in the search for my soulmate. As you now know, it's been quite a search for me. <laughs> Today, I look at a woman who has turned me into a man I've always set out to be, and who you deserve. This is a long speech. Oh, uh, really? I'm sorry. Oh, no one, and I repeat, no one has ever made me feel the way that you make me feel. Ding dong. Oh, oh. Never mind that, keep going. I want to spend my entire life with you. Every waking second, minute, hour, day. Ding dong. Okay, you better speed it up. <laughs> Francesca, will you marry me? Yes. <laughs> It's canceled. I'm curious, who is it? Honestly, I don't know. Only three people confirmed. One? Quinn. I apologize, but he's not feeling well. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Let's all sit down. I gotta have to get a crowbar. <laughs> All right, um, seat, please have a seat. All right, Quinn, um, when you're talking, I'd like you to look past the camera, okay? okay. What is your name? Quinn. Good enough. Where were you born and raised? Here in New York City. I'm gonna need you two to concentrate over here. <laughs> uh, yeah, all right. We're ready. You don't have to sit that close to each other. <laughs> we know. <laughs> I prefer if there's space. <laughs> what do you do for a living? You or me? To you. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm so nervous. I've, I've never said anything like this before. It's all right. You'll be fine. You'll be fine. <laughs> I said that already. <laughs> so again, what do you do for a living? Uh, I'm a kindergarten teacher. What did you do before that? Um, I was getting my MA. Okay. But no hotel industry job, a manager, critic, or maid? Oh, no, not me. Um, do you recall the first time you met Juan? We were dancing. <laughs> you met while dancing. Uh, he was at a church. Yeah, but... <laughs> we were there for the service. <laughs> <laughs> we were both uh, waiting in line to meet with the DA. Your crime partners. Oh, we would be terrible criminals. Yeah, that's why we got caught. <laughs> uh, we were uh, participating in a, in a program for warrant forgiveness. Mm. Uh, if you had a minor offense, the well, the DA would wipe it clean off your slate. Yeah, it was a way to keep the line um, getting too long at the courthouses. What crimes were you guilty of? She was caught peeing in public. Oh. <laughs> right next to a police car. Like, you know, you got, you got drunk and wandered into Central Park after hours. <laughs> and the dancing? 
Um, and everyone was waiting in line at the DA, and there was this little uh, choir. Ah, uh, they, they weren't yeah. any good. Yeah. <laughs> um, so Juan here decides. I was to, standing in line yeah. in front of her, <laughs> and then that he's uh, going to sing. <laughs> and you know, that's something I don't do. Yeah, yeah. So he oh, yeah. he walks over to the choir and he gets them to sing um, "The Waiting" by uh, Tom Petty okay. and the Heartbreakers, and then then it was uh, "Waiting for the Day" by George Michael and. Um, waiting on a friend by the Rolling Stones. Uh -huh. Yeah, and then and then finally he gets everyone singing right here, waiting by Richard Marx. <laughs> yeah, I take her hand and we sort of waltz around. Uh, <laughs> mm -hmm. We we were together ever since. Um, oh my God, isn't that so disgustingly cute? <laughs> <laughs> Like an insect with a bow tie. <laughs> Some might say that was a little fast. Oh, oh, I, I agree. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, completely we, stupid. We were warned by our friends. It was family. Yeah. But we believe we were true sons. We were connected. We, we practically finished, finished each, each other's sentences. sentences. <laughs> <laughs> How long were you two together? Um, six months. Um, yeah, my, my, my brother was in the VA hospital um, suffering from PTSD um, and he soon took his life. Um, so I had to go to California uh, where my parents retired and I had to tell them um, and, and I got a job offer and, and then I just felt the West Coast sun hit me like nothing I've ever felt before. My sister. My sister and her brother were a pair. As you know, that he, she was also at the clinic. A week later, took her life. It was hard for Queen and I to talk. I gave him an ultimatum. Like, I'm a teenage girl. I had purchased the site for the hotel. When was this? Before Mary, after Isla, right before Ren. It's not written like that in your book. I wrote when I was emotionally able to. So, as the one who got away, did he propose to you? part of the documentary. Just go, let's move on. Did he? We're done. We're done. I need you to answer the question. Are you okay? That's enough. Stop it. Thank you for being here and taking the time to do this. I know how much you hate flying. Oh. I moved back. Of course you did. <laughs> when? Um, a few months ago? I'm glad you're back. Are you two together? Oh, yeah. We've been dating for about a year. What about you? Oh, no. That shouldn't take long. Mm, um, when it happens, it happens. Thank you, Francesca. Likewise. Thank you. I hope um, your film turns out great. Thanks.
Are you sure that's it? <laughs> no one else got back to me. I did get one message, but of something, nothing but laughter, but took that as no. What are you thinking about? I had two other relationships for you. One was my high school sweetheart cheated on me with his best friend who I knew she liked him. You know what I learned from that? What? You learn to trust your instincts. That's a good lesson. My second relationship was with a local drug dealer. He had tattoos and a scar on his face and long hair. He gave me an ultimatum. Break up with him or wait seven years until he got out. <laughs> <laughs> My relationships are the outcry of a little girl. I know of a little boy. You may have a long list, but you never wasted any time. That's what life is about. So then, how are you doing that very thing here with me? That isn't true. You're like a dog when you're with me. You wait around for me. You do stupid things like this. And you've convinced yourself that it's love. I love you because of the way that you make me feel. I treat you like an old man. I scramble around to meet your needs so I can get approval. That's not how I see us. How could you? You want this to work. And you? I want this to be easy. Well, every relationship has its flaws. I'm not willing to deal with these. Right now, I'm acting like a child with a camera. So say it. Do I have to? Yes. It's over between us. Don't tell me that you don't want me because then I'll believe you. I need you to do exactly that. You're messing us up. Yes, but then I'll get to have me again. I didn't know I was doing this to you. It's my purpose. I really thought you were the one. Maybe I'll see you again when your ex-boyfriend makes a film. <laughs> Pause. I learned something today. It's funny, or maybe not funny, maybe more like bizarre, how something can happen in a moment and could completely affect the rest of your life. Yes, I'm still too young to really get that. I know I want love, but I don't think I'm ready for the responsibility to be so important to someone that you could destroy their entire life. I feel dangerous. I don't want to have to say sorry so many times. Each, each of us loves how we want to be loved. And I don't know how I want to be loved yet. It's time for me to be alone. Get to know whoever the fuck I am until I'm tired of myself or until I find- Ring, 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 ring. <laughs> Ring ring. Ring ring. Trevor? Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's done. It was indescribable. Shouldn't have taken really that long to edit. I'm thinking an all nighter for sure. If your girlfriend is fine with that. Yeah, uh, I'll be here all night. Bring wine. <laughs> Whatever you took from this, I hope you learned something about yourself. I'll let you know when I do.
Okay, I was supporting on YouTube and I'm realizing it's giving an echo. Hi, everybody. What's up? Can everybody hear me? Am I clear? What's up, Arizona? How you doing? This is dope. What's up? Um, well, first I want to say thank you, Major Christian. The freak the the cast is amazing, aren't they? And it sounds like I have some amazing supporters too. So love to you for coming. Yeah. Up. Yeah. Um, and a shout out to Isaac James Bryan, who also like hooked me up with this. Um, it means a lot to like have a chance to see, like, you know, to continue that, like, to continue putting Latino, Latinx, Latina performers on stage. So that means a lot. And that light blue, that light blue crouch looks comfortable. I wish I was there. <laughs> Right, like right there, exactly, yes. Um, and your suit is so fire, by the way. Um, <laughs> and so um, pardon me if I'm a little tired. It's just, so it's about to hit midnight in New York, but um, I had to talk to y'all. So um, I'm here, wow. Let, let's uh, throw, throw some questions at me, I'm here. What's up, What what? let's talk a little bit. What y'all, what y'all, have any thoughts? Christian, go for it. Yeah, I'm gonna lead you guys off with a few a few questions, and then we'll uh, we'll open it up for everybody to ask. Um, were there were there any moments you guys found that were confusing? I didn't. Uh, well, I guess it's kind of like I didn't get like the ending too much. It was just like it was just like oh, she's a hypocrite. Is that, mm. is that what that means? Mm. Well, that's what I took from it. Yeah. Okay. I mean, it sounds like you did get it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Um, no, but it's a it's a good point. What's your name? I didn't get your name. Jeff. Hi, Jeff. How you doing? It's a good point because um I want to speak on that. That's a really good point because um I what hit me so like for a long time of people a lot of people tell me I'm sort of I like to joke around if you can't tell and um a lot of some people have told me yo you should do a spin on Don Juan right. Like my IG handle is a one man show. So I like, I like to mess around with my name. Uh -huh. <laughs> and um, so they told me you should write a Don Juan show. That's just so like you, right? And um, I wasn't interested at first because it's about some dude who's like a womanizer. And I just, I didn't care. I didn't care. And in fact, when I heard about that story, I, I'm a very, I'm, I'm from the Bronx, I'm from New York City. I write the underdog stories. I give voice to the voiceless who I actually cared about in that story were the women. I wanted to know what they thought. Mm -hmm. And so like, when that was happening, I, I didn't feel qualified, right? And so people would tell me, we make jokes, whatever. 
And so like, it took some time for me to find my in as a writer. Um, and, and then it finally hit where it was like, um, oh, well, the women need to be heard in the story. How do I get into that is by having Juan, this character, right? Who's like a stereotypical man, right? And let him hear what he needs to hear. Because ultimately everybody in the audience needs to hear that too. That was my end. So in a way, right, what am I going to do? Am I going to write this guy who's going to, you know, let's say a really bad version of this play is writing Juan who just gets at the whole play and then the play. But then that's not also serving the women in the play, right? Mm-hmm. Women are people too. And they, they got, you know, listen, they have, they have problems like men. And so I wanted to create something that was so, that was fun too. And I, and I, and I wanted all these characters to have as much flaws as, as to be as right as they were wrong. Mm -hmm. And so the ending of this is like, yeah, she clearly how how much has she learned? Right. Mm -hmm. And so the lesson, the lesson is that when you're watching this, what do we do? We start thinking about our relationships, right? We start thinking about ourselves. So when you walk outside and you go back into the world, right? How could we be better at our relationships? You know what I mean? How could we be better at us as, as people? And that's what I wanted more than anything else. So in a way, it's true. I couldn't let Fran, Fran be completely perfect either, right? That's not fair. You know what I'm saying? So I needed her to have just enough flaws too. Because I want you all to walk out and say, hey, you know what? I can. I want to work on my relationship, damn it. Because that's what it's about. Um, I hope that makes sense. That makes sense, y'all? I hope that yeah. makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Was, there, uh, was there something you guys wanted to see more of? I think uh, when friends breaking the fourth <laughs> wall and just breaking mm-hmm. the wall, I love that. And to see more of that would be amazing. I, I love that. Thank you for that. Yes. I, I actually second that. Yeah, I was thinking mm-hmm. that. Ooh, ooh. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, cool. I'm gonna work on that. I'm gonna think about that. I want to see more exes. <laughs> <laughs> you know what's funny is that like I I I contemplate about doing um uh Doña Juana like a different where like oh, we yeah. have right right she gets presented by her exes by her, I'm, anyway that could be. <laughs> Like, right, that could be fun. Like, why not? Right, why not flip the script? And that was sort of the purpose of this. I wanted to create an anti Don Juan play, right, where we flip the script on everything. Um, but that's a good point. I like that. Yeah, yeah. Anything else? Yeah, go for it. Um, I just wanted to know what inspiration you have for each female character in this play. So, that, that, that's great. Um, yeah, I had to sit and think about. So let's start with Fran, right? Fran is this, I feel like Fran is so brave because what she does is question love and then just goes for it. I think a lot of us like, yeah, this is love, right? When we when we have, our, we all have our own definition of love. And what Fran does is question its death, right? Um, and I think a lot of us want to be that brave. I think a lot of us would like to know some history and all this stuff about like the things we're getting in relationships we're getting involved in. And um, so I I like idolized her in a funky way. And I and um so she she represents like one willing to try to understand love all the way. Um, and that could be, is that a bad thing or not? I don't know. That's for you to decide, right? Um I think I love this. I love something about Alan Juan. They're so alike. And I think, you know, if we, we might, some of us may have this experience, if not all of us. We can meet people who were like almost too alike. Yeah. Right. And does that work? I don't know. Some say opposites attract. I think that's kind of bullshit. But I, I, because <laughs> you got to have some kind of same values, right? Like, so whatever, whatever works for you, right? So I feel like, She's too much like Juan in a sense, right? Where they can't sort of, they both can't get their head out their asses. Um, Mary is like obsessive love, right? Obsessive love, right? But yet she got some dude, she got a boyfriend on the side this whole time. So, so, so I don't also let her walk away completely without dignity, right? That's important. Um, but obsessive love, some of us get obsessed with love and that's how we are. Um, 
Ren is this like learning about self-love in order to love, right? And comes in and needs that closure. About to get married in a week and still shows up. Mm -hmm. Needs that closure. Right. And I think some of us sometimes carry that or we can't help but carry the remnants of our old relationships into our new ones. And we got to decide, is that fair or not? Right. What do we do with that? Sometimes we can't help that. Right. Um, and, and Quinn is like the unconditional love. Right. Love you can't help. Right. Love that when you just with this person, you just can't help. Um, and so. I, I was trying to be really purposeful with each of them. Juan is like, I, I try to make him as like, I don't want to say stereotypical man in a sense, but in a sense, because I wanted him enough in that lane so that these women could really be like, yo, you messed me up, right? <laughs> but at the same time, why we like Juan is because he's honest. And I had to make sure of that. He can be a knucklehead, but he is honest. He's human too. So that that's something that I want men in the audience to understand, right? We can be human and messed up. Honesty is something that I've learned from the women in my life. Um, I, I'm surround my my side of the family, there's a lot more women. My wife's side of the family, a lot more women. I understand something that I've wondered what I've come to understand is like um from women is like, yo, you lie to me, and that's that's a problem. You need to be honest with me, right? Fuck up, be human, fine. When you lie to me, that's a problem. And that's something that Juan, that I can give to Juan. I can credit Juan as his honesty, but yet, you know, he does what he does. So those are sort of the representatives. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, I, and I want to make sure that, um, again, these characters are like evenly flawed, evenly, you know, we love them too at the same time, right? Um, yeah, did that make sense? Yeah. Um, uh, what themes or moments stuck with you? Nothing. Damn. Honey, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, learned nothing. That's what I guess. I am not an actor. I'm just here with my, my, my this gentleman right here. His character. It's his monologue, but he, I think he did a, a great job. You know? yeah. And his, yeah, he, I think he did a great job with the monologue. I didn't, I didn't even pay attention to Juan or anyone else on the stage. As he, it was a pretty long one. He was building a character in my mind through that. And the only thing that really, I thought he did a great job. He built this character up. And then the one line that he said really kind of like, I'm like, that doesn't seem like something he would say. He goes, well, I invited you in my bed. And I'm like, well, I, he built me up in my mind, you know, it's like this, he's going to be a husband, he's got a child, and I'm like, would he say something like that? I thought, I thought he was going to say something like, I welcomed you into my home, I opened my heart, and you screwed me. But then he said, once he said that, I'm like, well, that doesn't, to me, doesn't seem like that's what his character would have said. I'm not trying to, but, that, but, he, but he did a great job. It's all good. Give it to me. I'm, I'm gonna. I'm gonna write that note then. No, that's cool. That's, I appreciate that. <laughs> cool, cool, cool. What's what stuck with me was the parts that were painful to watch. You know, because I was. It was really good at being a mirror, just like showing me like all these different. You know, because I've been on both sides of like every single one of those relationships. <laughs> so, so, so some hurt. Some hurt to watch more than others. So I guess the ones that stuck with me were the real ones, where I'm like, ooh, yeah, I've been that one, and like definitely caused a lot of self consideration and examination. So it was very the tool that you were trying to make this play was very effective in that way. Beautiful. Appreciate that. Appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah. It, um, the one that stuck with me the most was Quinn, and I think it was both because of like acting and the writing. Mm. But it was like the it was so noticeable the change in mm -hmm. Juan that all of a sudden he started answering the questions too and remembered things that were happening before. He was like, I don't remember my past, but all of a sudden he remembers his past. Mm -hmm. And he's like giggly and all this, and I was like, that's crazy. And then, <laughs> <laughs> and then at the end when things started getting really sad and i was like oh, okay i couldn't handle that after that point <laughs> hey, hey, i appreciate that yeah that that's me trying to reflect that's love right one day you happy one day uh, 
Oh! And then one day, <laughs> again, right? Yeah. So, I, I really like um, um, Francesca's little kind of thing at the end of like why she needed to separate from him when he was trying to get her to, you have to say it. And I, I forget the exact line, but she said something to the effect of, um, I have to, like, I, I have to, that she has to leave him in order to love herself again or to be herself again. And I feel like that really, I don't know, stood out to me as far as like, she's, she's starting to do things that she doesn't necessarily like, feel like herself and she's doing things right. for him like even making the documentary or whatever like what is she what is she reaching for and, and is this thing of like i'm not myself anymore when i'm with you i need to as much as they want to keep the relationship um she needs to detach from that to be who she wants to be again um, yeah and so i, I really like that cool cool yeah 100 percent. I, I she had to she had to walk away with like finding herself right um yeah i don't think i could have read it i just like the idea of like even as much as it hurts that like the breakup process of like losing somebody but it's also like keeping yourself intact over that and mm. it's, it's really like that mm. Mm. appreciate that appreciate that cool cool anything that was else very funny yes yeah. it was so, so funny, funny. Yeah. funny. <laughs> so, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. There were some moments where I was like, okay, I can't laugh. <laughs> so good. But, and you did a good job then because I couldn't tell. You guys were really like, there, there's something that I think about comedy because it took a few years for me to get used to just comedy as a writer. And then I realized it was like, and what all of you did so wow, wonderfully was the characters listening and reacting. Simple as that. Mm -hmm. A lot of the jokes that, happened tonight we're not necessarily even in the script yeah we're just doing because then you were in the room and in the space together and i think i think that's what um brings that alive so i, I want to say thank you for that because that's something that's that's what like that that's why i wrote it sure it was great to hear a laugh my line cool but the, the chemistry you did together bringing it alive together that's why i wrote it and i it's, yeah yeah <laughs> Sorry. Um, I was just going to say that I felt like a really pivotal point for me in the play, like a turning point was the situation with Ren, the interview with Ren, um, that really started to shift my perspective on Fran a lot, because up until this point, it's like, oh, this girl, like, she's just trying to figure out what's going on, you kind of sympathize with her and stuff like that, but the conversation with Ren struck me because she's literally hearing that her boyfriend at one point led this man on all weekend and then robbed him mm -hmm. and she's not horrified by that situation she's like defending him mm -hmm. and so at that point i was like you've been pissed off about all these other stories up until now but this is the one where you're like somehow not horrified by this so that's when it started to click i was like i don't think fran is as righteous as she mm -hmm. seems in the first half <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> 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 And, and I appreciate you so much saying this because that's the point, right? It's like, we're not all perfect, but at the same time, like I, my goal with the play is to make you analyze your life, right? Make you analyze the relationships you have with people, right? Like Fran is not perfect. So do we, do we all create systems and rules and metrics in our head with our relationships that are kind of, are they kind of bullshit in some situations? Are they yeah. not, right? So like, I appreciate that because that that's so true. That's really true. Yeah. Did no one have a problem with her reading the diary? <laughs> I'm like, you made me mad. You, know, you, you had to fight to get me back, which you did. But like when she, when she pulls it out and then like rains it on him, I'm like, bitch. <laughs> or it equates itself or however we deem it worthy the fact that you got me angry 
that's hot, right? <laughs> and the fact that I still cared about what happened to Francesca and Juan, that's hot too. And I have to tell you, unless we timed it really badly, this play came in at an hour and three minutes. My God, man, thank you. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Like, to tell that depth of story in that amount of time and have us literally going, oh my God, we're done, we're done. Yeah. <laughs> like, thank you, friend, thank you. I I um I'm honored to hear that. I'm gonna take I'm gonna I'm gonna put that on my website and I will enjoy that. <laughs> I appreciate that. And that was that was a I appreciate that. And that was again, yeah, that's that's the goal. So that means a lot to me. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I just wanted to say something just light and serious. I had a friend like Juan. Uh, oh. He was a Cubano. A friend. And I was just seeing a lot of yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> I don't know what happened to him. Every time I saw him, he was another was another lady. So I mean, like it was just like reading, seeing it back. That's great. One more. Cool. Well, I'll say I'm coming. Um, I do want to say thank you. I think um, what made this piece very fun was that it was very relatable. Uh, not just on the artist side, but I think as an audience member, you kind of relate and you're like, ah, oh, I've kind of been through this before, or I have a friend just like one myself. And so you start relating and you start connecting. And, and I think that's what really made uh, your work stand out because we all were invested right away because of the connection. Um, also, thank you because I, I'm laughing because I feel like I have closure now. Applause <laughs> <laughs> for that. Applause for that. And it's funny because when I read the script, I was like, this is kind of scary. I, I, I just recently been through this. Not that I had my, my wallet stolen, but <laughs> the situation <laughs> overall, where you in love, sometimes you misinterpret the signals or you just kind of are led on into a false idea. And so releasing that tension from my personal past was really good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you 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 made my night because like I, I I a playwright can only dream that as I share we share these stories that you can go home a little more healed whatever the hell that means yeah. but um that means a lot yeah appreciate that <laughs> I was just I'm uh, gonna say also thank you and I was so excited to be a part of this whole Hispanic cast and Yeah, it's it, it's a big thing. It means a lot because um, you know, we want to keep telling our stories and tell stories that don't necessarily are like, I mean, both are important, right? Stories that were like I'm Hispanic and stories where like I just happen to be, right? And both are important. And um, I I want to give mad love to the academy and mad love to everybody sitting in that audience who came out tonight. Yeah, yeah. Listening. Right. <laughs> Means a lot, yeah. Means a lot. All right, thank you guys for coming out. Juan, thank you for blessing us mm -hmm. once again. Yeah. 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 One man show. Yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 yeah.